written production of the recreation centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our recreation center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the recreation centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. Kind of stop grading on the slopes right now. Got it. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everybody. Hopefully, you're uh, all getting ready for this big Easter weekend. I know our events and entertainment group has filled, I don't know, 700 eggs. <laughs> so we're getting ready. Hopefully you're getting ready for 100 degrees as well. So it goes from 70 to 100 this year. Um, so I'm sure you all have seen that uh, the progress on the lake uh, is, is moving along very well. We did have uh, some more rain, uh, as you guys well know, and, but it looks like right now that's going to slow down for the next few weeks. So that should help us considerably. Um, so there are still some delays, but it's not, not that great, and, and uh, Corey will, will go through that. A couple things with respect to safety. So uh, as most of you have seen, the cul-de-sac on 105th Avenue, where the trucks are going in and out, there we're doing at a, a clip of about 100 trucks a day out of there. So sometimes there's two and three at a time coming out. I think they're doing a great job of keeping the dust control there. I've, I go over there all the time uh, just to make sure, and I think they're doing a good job of that. But the one thing is, is that we, we really would ask that we limit the looky-loos. So I know we put out a, a notice on that, but it's just, we, you know, from a safety perspective, we don't want cars driving in and out of that cul-de-sac unless they, you know, unless you have to, if you obviously work at the uh, commercial facility there next to it. But um, if we could limit that, that would be great. Uh, secondarily, uh, unbelievably, we've had some um, instances of kids going into the lake. So they're climbing into the lake from properties. And so we would ask that you know you um, limit that and not allow that if you have your grandkids. I know it's such a, uh, a tempting um, facility to see all that dirt in there and seeing trucks and stuff. But again, that's that's a safety concern. So you know we will uh, we will trespass. You know if that if that happens because we just can't we can't have anybody you know going in there and getting hurt. So we appreciate that. Um, and with that. I'm going to pass it on to Corey, and he's going to give you some more updates. Good morning. Um, so we're making uh, we're making steady progress um, every day. Um, we have a couple of slides. If we can uh, put them up, that that eight and a half by eleven. That kind of just there you go. That one probably is. Uh, I don't know if you guys can read that or not, but um, so on the demo side, all of the. All of the demolishing of the lake shoreline is complete, and the the lake shoreline was being reused for fish habitat. So it's been demolished, it's been all picked up, and it's been stockpiled. It's kind of right in the center of the lake, a uh, big, good-sized pile of, of the broken concrete. Um, all the fish habitat has been collected. Um, any of the unusable fish habitat has been hauled off and sent to waste. Um, but the fish habitat that can be reused is also stockpiled in the same central area. Um, all of the trees have been removed on on every lot, and thank you for your cooperation and kind of getting through that if you had an affected property. Um, you guys have all been great to work with and we appreciate the cooperation. Um, the, uh, the, the trees are all, are all hauled off as well, so you know we try to keep the waste um, off the floor and out of there. We're working as hard as we can to, to get it out. Um, and then all dock removals have been completed at this point. So um, if you have a dock that's still sitting there or whatever situation it's in, whether par partially removed, um, that's how it's going to stay until we start uh, putting them back together. And all the dock waste has been um, hauled off. So um, 
demo phase is for the most part done with the exception of the trucking of the uh, kind of the lake soils that we're having to get rid of. Um, so if we can scroll up just a, just a little bit. Um, we uh, in what we call phase one, which is primarily the viewpoint arm um, that's over in front of the viewpoint recreation center where the old community dock was at. Um, not the old, where the community dock will go back to. Um, so all of the truck, all the soils are out of that area. They were completed uh, about a week ago. Um, it was 1,792 truckloads, round numbers, 25,000 yards of material. Um, in the phase two arm, which is the arm that goes north up to Cameo, um, that's where we're working right now. Uh, approximately a third of the way through that soil as of Friday, we were at 28, 2850 loads. Yeah, 2850 loads as of Friday. Um, which we think is roughly half of the material um, in total. And so we're, we think we'll be finished in the Cameo arm by the uh, April 17th, which is a, you know, two more weeks. Um, and then we'll swing into phase three, which is the arm that runs over towards 103rd um, Avenue. Um, we're thinking that that's gonna be around the 15th of May um, when that'll be out. And, and at that point, all of the soil will be gone, um, and it's a, you know, all, the only thing, the work after that point is all new lake construction. Um, the, uh, on, the, on the lake construction side, um, all of the pipe penetrations that go into the lake um, are actually complete. I showed 75% complete on here, but apparently I misunderstood. Um, and what Lon told me today is that all of those penetrations that come in, we've done the, we've done the, the, the sub seal. We've pulled the soil back, we've set the grading up, we've poured a concrete collar around all of them. Um, they're all ready to continue with the, the lining process. Um, in the phase one area, again, the viewpoint arm, um, we are, we have regraded all of the lake slopes. So basically from uh, starting at that 103rd ramp area or the park, um, we've regraded the slope around the park and then along the, uh, the eastern edge of the lake um, uh, and then across the lots um, on that side. And so the, the lake grading operation is complete in there. Um, we, we stopped the grading operation in the cameo arm. We were trying to work both grading, slope grading and soil removal at the same time, but there's too much activity. Um, and we're kind of just in each other's way on the operations. And so the trucking is continuing and the grading operation has stopped for the time being um, until the trucking can get clear in that area. Um, the, we are, we started on the fish habitat pads in phase one, they sit on the floor. We have uh, five or six, six of them, uh, the liner placed and we have started putting concrete down as of today. Um, once that concrete sets up, we'll start moving the fish habitat material um, so that we can get the fish habitat material on them. Um, and then we've got the shoreline grading, mostly complete. Yeah, mo mostly complete in that phase one area. So we've gone through and we've trimmed the shoreline to its final grade. We've cut the keyway trench um, and we're ready for liner in the next... This week? Yeah, sometime this week. Um, we'll be starting on the liner. Um, the sequence is gonna be liner just on the slopes because we have to on this job, we have to build it from the inside out, which means the concrete trucks are gonna drive into the bottom of the lake. The concrete trucks will sit on the floor, we'll have a concrete pump, and we will then pump the concrete up the slope to the shoreline area to place it. Um, in a typical lake construction, we would line 100% of the lake and we would concrete from the outside, but because you know your homes all sit around the outside, there's no reasonable access to drag concrete hoses through. Um, so we're, we're building it from the inside. Um, that means we have to only put liner down the slopes, um, put the concrete in for the shoreline in, and then once that operation is complete, we will follow it up with reinstalling the docks and putting the docks back in place in that area. 
um, and then we'll continue to cycle through that as we go through the phase two and the phase three area. Um, and then just on a completion note, we've, as of, you know, on paper, we've lost five days um, as a result of the rain events over the last, since the last time we talked, two months ago, um, we've had kind of five or six days of, of uh, intermittent rainfall. Um, the rainfall doesn't really affect us that bad because the reason why your lake was leaking so bad is any any holes in it. I mean, the soil underneath this lake is very porous, very sandy, um, river bottom type material, and it um, it literally water kind of just disappears the minute that it hits it. So um, when you had holes and tears in the liner, that water was just you know it was just making its way out quickly. Um, and so again, kind of just in a graphic view here for you all, um, what I call the viewpoint arm is that yellow piece that's on here. The, if you can see the colors on there, there's a yellow shaded arm that's on the lower um, left side of the graphic. Um, and, and then phase two is that green area that's the north arm that goes up towards Cameo. And then the purple area is phase three. So that's the rough limits of what we're calling phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, and again, that's just for, so, so we have something to talk about there. Um, schedule wise, we can look at the schedule if you want to see it. We put this schedule together and we update it for RCSC um, on a regular basis. Um, the yellow highlighted items are the items that are of note. Um, you know, we added an HOA meeting, which is HOA meeting eight, so that got added to the schedule. Um, most of the items on, on this page are complete, with the exception of dust control, which is an ongoing operation, and that continues. Go ahead and, yeah, so then here we added all of the trucking items, which are those items that are in yellow on, on page, page two. The trucking operation has started slower than we wanted. Um, they, you know, they initially indicated that they would get it done with uh, 30 trucks, but then we all, we agreed that that was probably too many. And so we've been running somewhere in the 18 to 25 trucks a day um, is what we've had, what we've had going. And it took us a while to get up to that um, because you have to secure and find the trucks and, um, and make that happen. But so right now they're running 18 to 24 trucks a day um, pretty consistently. And, and we, again, we broke it on our schedule into the three pieces. Um, down the page that that highlighted item is the grading, slope grading in phase two. And again, that got delayed um, as a result of the trucking operation. So I just, I just highlighted it so that we could have it for conversation. And then on page three, the last item that got highlighted was that completion date. So the fill date has slid um, a week basically to the 4th of August is what we're tracking right now. Um, so that's a schedule update of what we have going on. Lon, do you have, did I miss anything that you want to bring up? No, I'm good. Okay. Did you want to talk about schedule starting earlier? Oh, so we have um, Maricopa County, um, you know, allows us to get started at 5 a.m. We realize that's probably earlier than you guys want us in your backyards. Um, we've been starting at 7, uh, starting the, what day, Lon? Monday next week. Yeah, Monday next week. Um, we'd like to start, we're going to start, or our plan is to start at 6 a.m. Um, it's primarily for kind of the health and well being of our employees as the days warm up. Um, it gets to be very difficult to do the physical labor side of what we have to do um, as the heat of the day comes on. And so um, the operation for the most part right now has been mostly equipment oriented with people sitting on equipment and moving things. That's easier to do in the heat of the day because most of those guys have air conditioned cabs, but um, our laborers that are out in the field are working with shovels and dragging liner and dragging concrete hoses and doing that type of work. Um, and it becomes very difficult in a hundred plus degree weather um, to do that in the heat of the day. Um, and so we, um, we're going to move to the 6 a.m. starting time. Um, 
and as we get into June, we might even be asking or looking at moving to like 5 a.m. because we start starting at 5. So, uh, but the current ask and discussion is to move to a 6 a.m. start. Um, and so we wanted to put that out there for you guys. Okay, with that, then we'll open up for Q&A. May I ask that you step on up to the podium. What? Nadine? <laughs> Nothing from you? Come on. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, thanks, Al. You finally convinced me that you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will absolutely back you up on that. These guys are great. It's been a great relationship, um, so that's, that's much appreciated, so thank you. Dave Deaver and Lot 54, um, just want to say great job, but uh, also we really appreciate these uh, information meetings. Uh, but we would like to have information a little more often than every couple months, and I wonder if it'd be possible to contact the local paper. They've been uh, reporting pretty faithfully, but it looks like what we read in the paper is largely what he, he's able to get from information meetings and just kind of scouring on his own, so. So what I can do is, you know, I try and put uh, information into the management report that um, Mike Weepert puts together. So maybe maybe we can put a couple more. I mean, we we do put the end date in there. Uh, maybe we just put a couple more line items in there. So yeah. that will, that comes out on a monthly basis. But I guess my request is if you could contact the paper, or if the paper has access to you, uh, you know, things like when the fish habitat pads start appearing, you know, right. what's going on. Sure, I mean, I, we have, and I, we've given, I think you've gone through, Rusty, you've gone through Joe Lynn to ask some questions, so. Okay. Um, and okay. we provide we provide whatever, you know, information that we have on that, so. Okay, yeah. appreciate that. Okay, sure. Okay. Good morning, this is Gerald Klaus, uh, 25875. Um, the fountains, are they gonna be renewed or are they the same amount of fountains uh, as before? They're not using the old ones, are they? They were kind of wore out. So yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, the plan is, like, are we replacing any? I can't remember. No, yeah. not at the, at the moment. We're gonna reinstall the current fountains. Right. Uh, we do note that the, they're a bit on the worn outside. They're still functional. Um, yeah, some so of it's, the jets in there, the, the, the guy, the pump guy I talked to years ago was saying that the jets were kind of wearing, wearing out that, you know, that uh, over the years, I don't know, they've been there 30 years or so, I think those fountains, but anyway, the one by Viewpoint Lake is a show place. I mean, that's for, you know, the people from all over the world come here to look at uh, Viewpoint Lake, and that, that fountain should be really uh, spectacular, I think, but anyway. We can uh, take a look at that. It depends on, you know, budget, but the good news is that we've rebuilt the infrastructure, so the electrical infrastructure is now uh, underneath, and it's not going to be, uh, you know, obtrusive and out in the open. So it, it's going to make it easier to at least maneuver those and, and replace if we have to. Okay. Uh, the first class job. It just looks beautiful what you guys are doing. And thank you so much. Hi, Patty Theaker. Um, so last meeting, it was brought up about um, a dock over by the ramp area that people can either launch their kayaks or also if you have to pull your pontoon up to it so that you can get it out or in you know, of the water. Um, has that been looked at yet? So I know Chris has, has done some, some research into that, so I don't know if you want to make any comments. Sure, Alan, you got this on? 
Um, yeah, we looked at that. Um, really, what we want to look at is whether or not uh, we needed to put any pylons into the into the uh, floor of the lake because that was going to impact the, the process of putting the liner in. And what we found is we have some space there. We can do a, the same similar cantilever type of a dock with with uh, potentially putting a kayak launch and then a place that, that a boat tie-up can be. We haven't finalized that plan. We were waiting to see how the, the rest of the project went and then whether we do that within this project or we budget for it in the 2024 budget, we'll, one of those we're going to take a look at. Oh, okay. We do listen to you guys, and we do, we do take action. So that's why these are good. We love these meetings. Uh, Dave Deaver again. Just wanted to ask what the thinking is on uh, the pea gravel for fish habitat. So I. Th Mike, I can help me on that. Did we yeah, we put uh, that in the budget, didn't we not, or we looked at it? Well, we have a proposal from uh, PAI, and yeah. we need to uh, probably get with uh, the, the correct club, Chris, and figure out where to put it. But the the answer is yes. We're going to put in a, a strip for for that. It's right. in it's in the plan, but it's not not fully baked yet. We need to we need to get the details rolling now. Yeah. Once we get to that point, then we're going to get some feedback from the sportsman club to, you know, make sure that we get input to make sure that it's done the way that, you know, the professionals want it to get done. So. And Clark, two questions. Do we have a potential begin the fill date? How long would that take, estimation? And two, how are we doing budget-wise, please? So, yeah, so Corey um, has now restated this fill date as 8-4, August 4th, so it's a five-day delay from the last time we reported. So um, with all the rain we've had, that's actually not too bad. Um, from a budgetary perspective, um, at this point, now that, especially now that we're halfway done with uh, excavating all the soil, um, I believe that we're, you know, on schedule to to meet budget. Um, the final, the fill, fill, was it 60 days to fill? I forget what that we is. We show 24 days to fill, but we also are moving into the where we overlap with um, the golf course peak irrigation demand days, and so um, the well that. The primary well to fill the lake is a 1,500 gallon a minute pump, which means that it produces around 2 million gallons of water a day, um, round numbers. And the golf course irrigation is in August is a 1 to 1.2 million gallons a day. Um, so that leaves 800,000 gallons that can go into the lake. Um, there is a back backup well that um, can be utilized as well. So we, we probably need to work a little bit more on that. Um, initially, we had planned on filling the lake earlier when it was in, you know, the, the irrigation demand wasn't as great. Um, and so the fill might take longer than that, 24 days. And 24 days is scheduled days, and working days are different. Our schedule calculates five-day weeks, not um, seven-day weeks, and the fill can run seven days a week. Um, so I'll look at that, and I'll, I'll get with the RCSC golf operations um, to update that, and I'll get back to Bill on a, a better estimate on filling time. Uh, and then to, before I forget, kind of an update to some of the questions on kind of what's coming up. So we start, you mentioned like you'd like to know the operations. So we are starting liner um, this week, it'll start happening on the lake shorelines. You'll, so you'll start to see the liners, black material. Um, and, you know, quickly thereafter, we'll start the concrete operation for the concrete shoreline. And so that concrete shoreline um, is probably going to be, you know, two plus weeks, two, three weeks out. We'll start seeing the shoreline go in. Um, so all of those operations are getting ready to get started. You know, I think things that are going on now, are, it's fairly obvious. Um, I know before we, we started doing any, um, you know, teardown, uh, but now it's pretty obvious. I go out and I, I walk the park and it's like, oh, okay, they're doing that now. So, um, you know, I, I, I encourage you to go to the park and walk around the park. You can see pretty much the entire lake and get a good viewpoint there if you, if you really want to see what's going on. Kara Camilli. Um, 
I was just wondering about um, the, when are you gonna be able to put fish back in? Do you have to do something to the water to make it habitable for the fish? So we absolutely, we have our, um, what, what's the title of the, the person that goes out and does the? Uh, Hurricane Aquatics. Her, with Hurricane Aquatics. So we have somebody that goes out on a monthly basis to check pH balance and, th and such. So obviously we would not want to do anything until we get the blessing from Hurricane okay. Aquatics to start loading fish. But, okay. you know, we certainly want to do that. Um, I have some ideas uh, that I want to talk with Chris about. So um, hopefully we've, we fall within budget and we have some budget to do some things. So, yep. Okay. And one more question. Um, about the old habitats, the ones that were round, made, I don't know what they were made out of. They look like little mesh somethings. Um, are you gonna replace those or are you gonna just trash those and use the cement stuff now? I think all we're doing is using the, the newly formed um, okay. fish habitats. Yeah, because I was Because most concerned. of those I think were not reusable. <laughs> we, we have a, we, we salvaged, um, they were corrugated pipe pieces, um, and we salvaged virtually all of those. Yeah. So there's 50 of them, 50, six, 50 or 60 pieces. Those will go back into the fish habitat. We'll right. reuse those. Most of the uh, small diameter PVC pipe that had like netting around it that were made in boxes and things, those were all, I mean, by the time we picked them up and tried to move them, they were falling apart as we picked them up. Yeah. So those got thrown away. Yeah, so yeah, that netting, Good. those yeah. rounds. Yeah, I was right? worried yeah. about those because I actually fell in the lake and I thought if anyone fell in the lake and they got hooked on that, one of those things, how would they get back out, <laughs> you know? I mean, if you hit your head, you're dead anyhow, but you know, I don't want to, I'd rather die quickly than drown. So yeah, I'm glad that you took those out. I was a big concern, thank so, you. So the plan is to never tie the, 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 the structure like that to anybody's dock in the future going forward. The, the fish habitats will be in the lake proper and away from the docks. Yeah. Yes. Question on uh, Dave Benson in 54, I think it is. Uh, on pouring the wall, it, will there be forums set for that or is it gonna be uh, sprayed on? Um, how is that accomplished? We, uh, we, we grade the shoreline to follow the design slopes. Um, the liner goes across the top of those. Uh, before we put the liner in, before we put the liner in, we set uh, control stakes at approximately three foot intervals around the entire lake. Um, there is a piece of uh, pen pencil steel, which is a number two bar, it's very, pretty small. Um, the liner gets wired up to that so that the liner stays up the slope because what happens is as we start to place the concrete, it wants to pull the liner down and we don't want the liner to come down, we want it to stay up. So we hold it up with, this, with those stakes um, and the concrete is then, on this job the concrete is set to follow your existing lots because this shoreline <laughs> moves around quite a bit from the, the low point over on the north west corner of the lake to the high point is on the south east corner of the lake and there's a six or eight inches of freeboard above water surface in the low point and it goes to 20 some inches in the high point. So the shoreline in essence climbs as you go around the lake, you have a bigger concrete bank in the, on the 103rd side of the lake than you do on the cameo arm. Um, and so we, we made the decision to just follow that existing line because that's where your yards are at and otherwise we would have had to rework you know, everybody's backyard to make a constant uniform shoreline work. Um, so, the, so from a control, your yard is the control in terms of what we're gonna build to. So that pencil steel is the only form that's basically holding? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a concrete, troweled, hand-finished shoreline. <laughs> so we, it's a pumped concrete, we pump the concrete, it, we stack it as we go up the slope, and then it's, it is a hand-finished shoreline. So it's finished with a trowel.
I think you're saying a, a knee wall, and so no, we're we don't come out of the ground. We're we're flush with the ground. There's no wall element. No, it gets it gets slightly <coughs> modified. It's slightly more vertical um, than what's there right now. So it becomes a little steeper than what you have. If you if you go to the Bill's suggestion, I would encourage all you guys to go over to the Viewpoint Park because you can, you literally can see everything. That area is graded. You can look at exactly what it looks like. You can see the Shoreline Keyway. Um, they're actually setting up to put stakes in today. Yeah, they probably started stakes today. Um, the fish habitat's on the floor and the concrete's being placed, you know, right now. Um, so you can kind of see the concrete going in on fish habitats. Um, and you can see how the liner is going to be staged in that first area. Where, where you're... It, it's the weight, that limit is, yes. When, when you see the stakes go in at the top of the shoreline, you're gonna see them sticking up two inches. Concrete is gonna be hand formed another two inches higher than the stake, so you'll know where you're at. Yeah, can you guys go, please use the microphone so everybody can hear your question. Thank you. So I'm a little confused. You guys said that there was going to be a, like an area that was a step up, but now you're saying the slope's going to be steeper. There was supposed to be so you could get out of the lake easier if you fell in. So that's what I'm confused so, about. So I think you, 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 we um, we're using terms that are probably confusing the issue. There's not there's not going to be any steps. Um, we're not changing what the top was like. The top's going to be almost identical to what you had in the past. Um, the, the slope of the shoreline will be steeper, but the depth of the water is going to be shallower. Um, and so the shallower area brings it up, brings the bottom up in case somebody falls into the lake. They'll have some, instead of being in three to four feet of water, you're going to be in two feet of water. Um, and so the, the, the height of the shoreline has been reduced as, as a result of the grading. Um, and then the back slope, or the actual slope at your property line, we steepened it just slightly um, because we want to see more water quicker um, instead of having that, the slope that it was on. Um, so that's, it's a, it's a slight change. I don't think, I don't think any of you will even notice it. It just allows for more depth quicker. Anything else? If you could step up to the mic, if you, if, so that the rest of the folks can hear, please. Thank you. Appreciate that. Looks like the depth of the lake is a lot deeper than it was before because the amount of uh, material that's being moved out of there, is it going to be a lot deeper than it was before? It's going to be one foot uniformly less. There was so, so roughly there was, you know, somewhere four to six inches of kind of silty material and then there was the one foot of earth cover. So say 16 inches, all of that is being what's, what's being trucked out now. So that, that drops it roughly 16 inches. Um, and then in order to regrade the slopes, we were generating round numbers, 25,000 cubic yards of soil that we're excavating out of the bottom so that we can place it on the, the slopes. So in order to raise the slopes, we are lowering the floor. Um, and that's not necessarily uniform. Um, it's being, for the most part, generated kind of right next to the slope um, is where it's coming out. So, so yes, there, the lake is probably 18 inches deeper than it used to be, round numbers. Okay, anything else? 
Hi, just curious, how did you uh, resolve your dilemma about where the dirt was going? Where, where is it ending up now? So that was a long process. Um, I always wanted to be able to dump the soil you know, and not in a landfill, but on a you know property where a farmer could use it and reuse the soil. There is, we did all kinds of testing. We had a 30-page report on the material itself. There is some organic value to it. So that was always my intent. Um, it took us probably three or four months to find, finally find somebody. And especially at the point where we knew there was more soil than we originally had planned. And therefore, um, and now it became an economic driven uh, you know, process as well. So fortunately, um, I, I called in some folks that I know that have been in farming for three generations here in Arizona and found somebody who not only had the land to utilize the soil, but also had a trucking company. Uh, so they, you know, it was a win-win because it ended up being probably 20% of the cost that, of taking it to the dump. So, you know, we saved a lot of money. We're still able to, you know, stay within budgets, even though the soil, uh, the amount of the soil was um, considerably higher. So when I run across the trucks, when I'm coming back from the golfing lane down on El Mirage and find them dumping it into the lake, that's the farmer that's putting it there temporarily until they put it on the land. Dumping it into what? Uh, dumping lake? it into the, the river basin where those uh, large uh, gravel pits have been uh, taken off. So at 4515 El Mirage Road is where the trucks are going and uh, dumping. Yeah, I don't, I, quite honestly, I'm not sure exactly where. I, I don't know the, the exact destination, but I was told it was, you know, land that was, was utilized by you know, farming, and so that was what I was told. But there's there's probably multiple places that they're dumping. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of soil. A lot of soil. So yeah. Okay, I just came across the trucks, and they weren't going to any farm. Okay. They were going into the pit to be dumped onto. So. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay, well good, so hopefully, hopefully you all have a good Easter and you know, we're shooting for beginning of August to start filling. of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast, or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.